at the beginning of Whip Wednesday stands for work in progress. So it's what a lot of us crafters call our whips when you have a bunch of different projects uh, that are kind of ongoing or you're starting something new. So it's kind of just a way for me to come on here live and chat with you whether you're watching us on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel or on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page. So welcome to everybody that's tuning in. Let's say hi to some friends. Hi Maureen from DeBerry, that's a neighbor here. I'm coming to y'all from my home sewing studio. We live in North Central Florida. It's kind of nice and a little overcast today, but we have a new, uh, what is it, a tropical storm? A new tropical storm, something with an F Fred or something that's on its way here <laughs> this weekend. So uh, we'll be kind of hunkering down. I won't be starting any new seeds for the garden uh, until that storm passes. I don't want my stuff to get drowned out. Let's see who else. Hi, Margie, tuning in from Wisconsin. We got Lorette tuning in from Massachusetts. Hey, everybody. Hi, Jesse. Hey, Tamara from Chicago. And Janelle is tuning in as well. So is Mary from Phoenix. Hi, everybody. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Can everybody see me and hear me? I see somebody said there was an error. If you're having a problem, maybe go ahead and refresh. All right, so if you can see me and hear me, let me know in the chat box below, and I'll go ahead and get started. Great. I see Sheila's in, Sue from Minnesota's tuning in, and I'm going to get started because I think we're doing okay on the technology. And yes, okay, great. I'm getting some yeses. So awesome. So in today's Whip Wednesday, I am working on some pillowcases. And if you recall, I feel like this is always like the number one video tutorial that I posted Almost 10 years ago now on my YouTube channel, Allie was a baby and she's going to be 10 next month. So maybe 10 years ago. And uh, every time I meet people in person, they'll be like, I found you from your burrito pillowcase tutorial or I first learned about you from the burrito pillowcase tutorial. So it's super popular. It has like over a million views. So we are going to do a slightly different take on the burrito pillowcase today just because I'm leaving out one step to kind of make it a little bit quicker for us to crank out. And I have a sample here to show you. So this is what it would look like. And if you've made it from my tutorial, you know that in between the body of the pillowcase pattern and the cuff, we have like a thin little accent trim. So I'm skipping the accent trim. These are just some new pillowcases for my daughter's room. She's really into navy right now. So we're going to be using some different navy fabrics. All right, so we've left out the little trim. If you want to see the step-by-step -step edited video tutorial, I included a link for that uh, below this YouTube video if you're watching us on YouTube. And we'll go ahead and include it in the chat on Facebook as well. You can always also just do a Google search, type in Crafty Gemini pillowcase, and boom, it's going to be the first thing that pops up for you. All right, so we're going to make it real simple today. But as you can see in this sample, I made it with non-directional fabrics. So let's go ahead and switch over to my over-the-shoulder cam here, and we'll talk a little bit more, and I can show you a little better because I have a wider shot here. Perfect. Okay, so here's the pillowcase, and this overall kind of tossed floral it does, and when we talk about directional prints, that just means that it doesn't matter which way this is oriented, right? We can still tell that it's flowers and they're kind of all sprinkled around. So it's not like text or uh, a character or some type of uh, figurine that you need to read it from left to right, depending on which way you place the pillow on the bed. Okay, so what I wanted to do for this demo is I'm going to walk you through making one with just two fabric pieces like this, one main body fabric piece and one for the cuff. And then I have cut out two pieces of when you're to basically walk you through some tips if you're using directional prints, how you'd want to cut it. I know that a lot of you like to make these pillows for kids or for charity, and a lot of those fun novelty prints that are on the market are all directional. So I went ahead and pulled out another navy directional print that I have here with little unicorns for alleys. And let's see. All right, hey, we got a bunch more friends tuning in. We have some of you saying that you've made a bunch of these pillowcases before, so that is awesome. If you haven't, stick around. Maybe you'll learn some tips so that you can crank some out using directional prints as well. All right, so let me scoot this stuff out of the way. So to get started now, one thing to note is that the size that I'm going to be working on here is just for a standard pillow. OK, which typically measures around 20 by 26 inches. But even here in our house, we have standard pillows that have all kinds of uh, different measurements. OK, so we're just going to keep it simple with this. I know a lot of times people will ask me, well, what are the dimensions if I want to make it for a king size quilt or a king? king. Why do I keep saying quilt? 
<laughs> um, a king size pillow. So I don't use king size pillow, so I've never made one for a king size pillow. If you have, and you know the dimensions off the, the top of your head, go ahead and put it in the chat because I know a lot of people will benefit from that since I often get that question asked a lot, but I've never made one for a king size pillow, not a quilt, pillow. Okay, so normally I would start off with whatever the main fabric of the pillowcase is going to be. I keep it just as it came off the bolt. Meaning if you walk into a fabric store or you order it online and you're ordering like designer quality quilting cottons, this is how it's going to come. Selvage and selvage at the top and it's usually folded right here on the bolt. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say the same way it came off the bolt. So the length that you're going to want of a piece like that is gonna be 24 inches, all right? So this one is cut to 24, that's for the main body piece. Then the cuff itself, I cut to half of that. So 12 inches by what we call in quilting and in fabric yardage like this, uh, the width of the fabric, because the fabric from selvage to selvage is the width of the fabric, and this is, Usually, if you're working with designer quality quilting cottons, and most, you know, even quilting cottons that you get like at your big box Joann's fabric store and stuff like that, they usually range in width from about 40 to 45 inches wide. And that means from selvage, which is this white strip here, and selvage, okay? So that's what you're looking for, something that measures about 40 to 45 across the width, and then for the cuff, I cut it just to 12 inches, and then the body to 24. So let's talk about this directional print. Okay, so when the fabric comes off the bolt like this, I see the unicorns, and they are kind of tossed all over the place, but there is still a correct way to orient this so that they're mostly reading up and down because they're not all completely upside down either. So the, the, the right way to read this would be like this, where the unicorns are all reading from top to bottom, and some of them are facing to the right, to the left, kind of a tilted and standing a little bit up, but they all read this way. Well, in order for you to see if that fabric is going to work for you in a directional sense, um, what we're going to do is open it up, basically going over the first two steps of making the pillowcase, um, Estrella is asking, does that account for shrinking after washing? So if you're using the better quality quilting cottons, it's only going to shrink about one to 3% at the most. So as you can see in this one, the standard pillow that's inside of it is still smaller, right? So even if I were to wash this because I didn't pre-shrink it and I wash it, it's not going to shrink that much to make it a problem, right? And if you are hesitant about that, two things you can do. One is pre-wash your fabric and two is maybe add on an extra inch or so so that you just make sure you have extra and not less than what you need, okay? All right, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, Mary Jo is saying for a queen size pillow, she cuts the fabric pieces 20 inches by 30. So, I mean, it's a lot of just trial and error and playing around with what works for you, especially if you have kind of like a set um, standard pillow or whatever size pillow at your house. I would say go by those measurements and then adjust accordingly to see, you know, make one regular one first, see how it fits. If it needs to be a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, you can adjust from there. All right, so the first two steps would be to place your, the main exterior fabric of the pillowcase in front of you with the pretty side facing up like this, selvage on the left and selvage on the right. Now, if I do the same thing for my cuff and it would be up top here, pretty sides together, Okay, this is basically the positioning for the first step of making the pillowcase. I'm gonna stop right here and I'm just gonna turn things out and fold them the way that it would be as we work our way through the steps so you can see how the unicorns are gonna end up looking, right? So if I sew this here, that would be the cuff, this would be the body, then this whole thing would get folded in half with this. And this is just part of kind of how I like to teach and show people like, walk yourself through visually how is it supposed to look so the cuff is sewn up here and this is the body of the unicorns the unicorns are reading correctly but only because i have it oriented like this and you're not going to sleep with the pillow like this right we're going to turn it so that the cuff is to the one side and then look what happens to the unicorns they're turned on their side I personally don't think it's that big of a deal, so if you only have directional prints, just go ahead and make some with it, especially if they're for kids, they're gonna love it. As long as, you know, whatever the cutesy design is, nobody really cares. But if you do want it to be oriented correctly, you'll have to cut it a different way, okay? 
and I'll show you. I'm going to keep this cuff because I'm still going to work with this. This is what I would call a non-directional print. It doesn't matter which way the little jacks are going, right? Let's see. Sharon says, this pattern is plenty big for a standard and works fine for a queen size two. It's bigger than the ones you purchase, so that's good to know. Again, just you know, check the tag on the pillows that you have and see what they're what the measurements are. I've seen some that instead of being about 20 by 26, they're instead like 20 by 29. So they're just like a little bit longer. And so in that case, you could just add a couple inches to the body and or to the cuff, okay? Because we're going in that direction lengthwise. All right, so this is the wrong one. And so this one here. Let me see. All right. So now this one, I'm going to orient it the way that I had it before. So the, sa the way that it would come off the bolt is like this. Remember, the selvage on one end and selvage on the other. I don't have a selvage here because I've already trimmed it to size. But you can see, if I would have cut it like this, the same way that we oriented the other one, that's how we would have ended up with the unicorns uh, facing the wrong direction. So what you have to do in this case instead is to cut it. Remember we talked about the, or the, the width of the fabric on designer quality quilting cottons being 40 to 45. I went ahead and cut this 42 inches along the lengthwise, okay, which is more than a yard. So you ha it requires, if you're going to be turning things around to make them directional, it requires that you have more fabric. So whereas for this, we cut 24 inches, which is less than a yard by the width of the fabric. Here, we needed to go 42 inches this way and then cut it down to the 24 in the opposite way. So let me walk you through this. I have the selvage going this way. Okay, so along a selvage edge cut is where you need to have that 40 to 45. Okay, and then we're going to take our cuff, so we're still going to do the same thing, and I'm actually going to do it to the other side. We'll trim away that selvage after. So we'll do the same thing and visually just walk through to see if we're doing it right. So again, the cuff would be up here, the same width, okay, going lengthwise together. I would say one on top of the other pretty sides touching, right? We're going to put some pins there eventually. But if I flip this to the right side and then I fold it in half, like we just mentioned doing, because these are going to be the steps. Now you can see that the unicorns are kind of sideways so that when we do turn it and have our cuff here and the body of the pillowcase here, now the unicorns are oriented correctly. Okay, so walk yourself through that. You're basically just changing the dimensions. Instead of running 24 inches by the width of the fabric this way, we're going width of the fabric this way and cutting 42 and then trimming that down because you basically end up with like a 42 by 42 inch square and you need it to come down to 24 inches. So you're kind of just swapping the measurements, okay? But if it doesn't make sense, try to do it like I did here and just kind of orient things together and turn it to see how it's gonna turn out when you do it, okay? Now, just keep in mind that on this side, the unicorns will be correct or oriented correctly, but because this is one continuous piece that just gets folded in half, if we were to flip this over and have the cuff on this side, then the unicorns are gonna be upside down. Okay, and the only way to fix that, those of you that have been in my bag making clubs and stuff, you know when I share tips about working with directional fabrics, would be to cut it here, flip one rectangle and sew it together, right? But then you'd have a seam going down the side where we normally wouldn't on this pillowcase. So that's, I feel like it's getting a little bit out there, but there's a lot of different options to doing that, okay? So let's see, make sure I'm not missing any quick questions here that have to do with this. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and set it up. So this fabric here, pretty side face up. Take my cuff fabric, pretty side face down. And if you're using two different uh, fabrics from different manufacturers or brands, you may find that the fabric length, when you line them up here, whether you're working with directional fabric or not, it might vary. It's okay. You can trim it all up after. And I talk about that in the tutorial that I did before. So I'm going to offset this a little because I have selvage there and I don't want it in my project. I can trim it off after. And then I'm just lining up the top two edges here and placing some pins. Now the pins, as I insert them, I'm placing them horizontal 
to meet, okay? But parallel to that top raw edge. And the reason I'm doing that is just to keep the pins from uh, being in our way when we go to fold this whole thing up. And those of you that have made my little burrito pillowcase before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna place pins. You don't have to put them super close because after we roll things up and position it for sewing, we're gonna remove these pins and insert them a different way. So I really, just to save time here, will just place pins maybe every four inches. You don't really need much. And for those of you that like to use clips, I would not use clips at this step because you want it to be kind of like the lowest profile hold on your fabric. And I'll show you where you can use clips next, okay? When we get ready to sew it at the machine. Okay, so I'm here. I got all the way to the end. You can see that this fabric measures a little bit longer than the one I cut because I subcut mine to 42 inches. This is the width of the fabric on this one, which looks like it's about 44 and a half. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so Gio says, I wouldn't mind the seam if the fabric is oriented correctly, so I guess it's personal preference. Absolutely, because you can sew it together in two panels and just have more seams around. It's all, I mean, and that's what sewing and crafting is in general. It's just personal preference. However you want to do it is the right way to do it. Okay, so what was I doing? Now we're going to flip the cuff fabric up and away from you. So you should be looking at both fabrics pretty sides up. I'm going to take the body of this and I'm rolling it onto itself. And just make sure that you don't roll it super wide like this. You want it to be rolled so that the roll itself maybe is about three to four inches. The reason for that is that it's going to help keep it away from this top edge, which then gets sewn in. And at this step, we don't want it to kind of get in our way and have us sew through more layers than we're supposed to, if that makes sense. All right, so this has been rolled up all the way up to where the two fabrics meet. Then I'm going to take my cuff fabric and flip it down over top of it. Then I'll grab it here at the pins and I'm gonna flap that fabric back and then bring this up, all right? So I'm gonna show you that again. We roll, roll, roll the body fabric all the way up to here, right before it meets. Grab your cuff fabric, bring it all the way over your roll. You're looking at your pins again. Grab it at the pins and grab that roll inside there too so it doesn't unroll for you. Flip it down, so now I'm looking at the pretty side of the cuff, and then I'm gonna flip this down and up and bring it to match up with the raw edge up here. So this is where we're now going to add. Where we pinned here just two layers of fabric, we now need to add this third layer of fabric. And this burrito method is what allows us to have clean seams on the inside so you don't have any raw edges. These three raw edges, the two that are pinned and this additional one that I've added now, are gonna be completely concealed, all right? So, now I'm folding this up and I'm gonna remove my pin and grabbing the last layer I just added of the cuff, I'm going to insert the pins uh, vertically here, perpendicular now to the raw edge of my fabric because we're gonna sew it down. And I always recommend that my students sew with the pins inserted perpendicular because that way you don't run the risk of not being able to see where the needle is coming down and you could possibly hit the metal pin as you're sewing. And I definitely never recommend that you sew over pins. Just grab all your three layers, make sure that you know none of them slip away from you because that would be a mess too. And if you use clips, this is where you would use the clips, okay? For thin layers like this, I like to just use the pins, but you can just place clips here. And I do that a lot when I teach kids. The clips are really easy for them and they don't have to worry about getting pinched the whole time they're sewing. So you could do clips like that or you can do pins, all right? Just make sure, double check, make sure you're grabbing all three layers the whole way. I'll put a clip here. Move this pin. And we'll just put one more at the end. So now you have this entire burrito of fabric. And we're going to sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance just straight down here where we've pinned, okay? So this is what I mean by rolling it up so that it's not all the way in your way. You want to feel here and make sure that the rolled up main fabric is not in there. You should only have three layers of fabric that you're going to sew through. So let's set up my sewing machine. Let's see. Okay. Turn it on. My foot pedal. 
All right, let me fix this up, make sure y'all can see me. Put my pin cushion here. All right, so here we go. Wow, Christy says, I have 18 grand darlings. I'm making all of them pajamas and matching pillowcases for Christmas. I love this method, thank you. That is awesome, and they do whip up quick. If you do things assembly line style, you can easily crank a bunch of these out, especially if you skip the trim and you just do it like this with two fabrics, that would work as well. All right, so let me. There we go. Get you a little bit more close up. And I'm going to change my needle position so that I could be a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then my stitch length, anywhere between two and 2.5 is fine. I'm just gonna start somewhere here because I can see that the main fabric doesn't start until further up, that's fine. Let's crank up the speed a bit. Needle down. I took a few back stitches there where I saw that my main fabric started. So here's a tip for those of you that are not used to maybe sewing with heavier things or bulky things with multiple layers, this whole strip, instead of leaving it dangling down, it's going to be putting a lot of drag on the sewing machine and the presser foot. So I'm going to bring it up on top of the table. For you, if you're sitting in a, in a, in a chair or a machine that's set into a table, you may want to put it on your lap. Just try and keep it from dragging on the sewing machine needle as you sew. And now if you're new to sewing and maybe you're not a quilter, if you find that a quarter of an inch seam is kind of narrow, you can absolutely use a three eighths of an inch seam for this project too. There's wiggle room in there, okay? So don't feel like you have to sew these really narrow uh, seams if you don't feel comfortable doing it or if you know that you're gonna probably miss one of the layers of fabric as you do it. And I'm hoping that I don't mess up here. I'm trying to keep an eye on all my layers of fabric that everything is together. So this is just one straight seam so far, all right? Let's stitch this up. Let's see. Yeah, so Sherry says, I usually accordion pleat it and put it in my lap. That's a great way to do it. Just set it down on you. Whatever you find that works without, you know, allowing the weight of that project to be holding your machine down is good. Okay, the last bit here. Let me peek and make sure that navy fabric is in there. Make sure also that you don't have any of the other fabric from your roll. And again, it doesn't have to be super, super perfect. It will turn out because like I said, there's wiggle room in here. All right, where are my snips? I don't know, oh, here they are. Clips away, pins away. Let's see what we got. Okay. So there's your burrito. I'm trying to see if I don't, if I didn't miss anything, make sure that that middle fabric doesn't move on you. So it's helpful. Even if you find like you don't need that many clips or pins, just put some more in there because you don't want to have to reflip this whole thing to fill it in. So now we're just going to reach inside and pull on the main fabric from this tube. Just pull and pull and pull and keep pulling until everything comes out and you should be looking at the right side of the cuff on both sides because that we folded in half to conceal those raw edges. And then the main fabric will have a pretty side and then a wrong side because that fabric is still open. Okay. This project, the parts that take the longest is really the pressing. Okay, so here we have our cuff. Here we have the main fabric and if you fold it in half, Ta-da! There are my unicorns, correctly oriented. Again, because it's one piece, remember that if you flip it this way, they'll be upside down. So up to you which side you decide to put the cuff on, right? Because you could put it on this side and then have it be the opposite, but same difference. Now, this is key. 
And I think this is helpful to note for other projects. If you ever have a seam that you sew, and this happens a lot in quilting too, certain areas will roll. They get kind of bubbled over like this. And I find that one of the most common beginner mistakes is that they just press it like right as it is. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you pull the fabric out of that seam first before you press anything. So for this, I'm going to grab my tailor's clapper here. And we do have some of these in stock. I don't think we have very many. We wiped out my distributor with the last bit that they had. So I did buy the rest of those and they are listed in the online shop. We'll put the, uh, the link here in the chat for y'all too. Um, am I in a good position here on camera? I think so. Let's go ahead and open this up a little bit, this shot. Okay, so here's what I mean by rolling it out. So if I'm working on one side, I see this wants to roll. If you just hit this with an iron, you can catch a little bit of both fabrics like that, and then you're gonna end up on one section wondering, well, why does this one look wider than this one? I know I sewed it pretty accurately, but it's not in the sewing that you make that mistake. It can often happen here in the pressing. So what I do, and what I mean by opening it up, is spread the fabrics away from each other. Okay, and then give it a press. And I'm doing this on one side. I'm gonna grab my clapper and set that seam. On the back side, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna also press it from that side too. So I come up here to where the fold is because there is no seam on the top, but I don't want it rolling around on me. Okay, now if you're not familiar with a tailor's clapper, if you watch my videos, you know what a tailor's clapper is by now. But this is just a piece of hardwood that um, helps kind of take away the heat and from the iron, from the fabric, and it just sets creases, folds, hems, and everything beautifully. So we use it all the time in handbag making, in quilting, and patchwork, and then, of course, in garment sewing. So again, I'm separating those two. I don't want it rolling and have me losing fabric or making things look uneven when I know that I sewed pretty straight. All right, so now we're gonna flip it over, do the same thing to the other side, and you'll see sometimes it happens that when I press from one side, it rolls. So like here, I have to, you see how this is like rolling over? I would lose like a, almost a quarter of an inch there. Roll that up and away. And if you find that just the heat of a dry iron doesn't help, you can always spritz your project in the fabric too with a little mist of water and that will help kind of release any wrinkles or creases that maybe you set that you didn't want in place. And then hit it with the heat again, then with your clapper, okay? All that helps. Oh, awesome, Terry says, I love the way we see you in the bubble and demo the project at the same time. Thank you, we try to do that, because I know sometimes it's no fun to have me talking and then my hands are just going like, <laughs> while I'm talking and I'm not really showing anything. So see here, you see how that's folded back? I need to release that fabric from there and then press it up and away. So take your time with the pressing steps. They are essential in all of your sewing projects. It takes long, but I don't know why I like pressing. I don't like pressing like just big yardage of fabric to prepare things, but I like pressing in, in steps as I'm making stuff. So. Because I set that crease there since I hit it from the front side first, I'm going to mist it with a little water to release that. And then I'll repress this, making sure that I'm spreading that fabric up and away from each other at the seam. All right. Yeah, and if you're enjoying this demo, if you're learning any tips, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're on Facebook or on YouTube, you can also click the share button to... Tell other friends about it so they can tune in that we are live here on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern doing demos, chatting, sales, new courses, all kinds of stuff here. All my little crafty Gemini happenings. All right, so boom, that's done. Now, let's go ahead and clean this up. And by clean it up, remember when I said, depending on whether you cut a directional fabric in different measurements like I did for this unicorn fabric, or if you're using different brands of fabric, different manufacturers, you'll see that you'll have it be a little bit off on the ends. And so this is where we wanna get my big ruler out of here. This is where you'll wanna clean things up, okay? So I'm just gonna take my long strip ruler Make sure that I have a square corner here. So I want this to run here and here. So I'll put a line on my ruler up at the top 
and then I'm going to run it down the side here and whatever is sticking out I'm trimming all right we'll do the same thing to the other side and if you didn't cut it yourself, like you're using directional prints the way that I show you in my other tutorial, then um, you'll see that you basically will be trimming away a selvage from your main fabric and a selvage from the cuff. Those are the fabrics that you'll be trimming up at this step. Okay, super cute. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim off the selvage that I have on the other side because remember we cut it differently for this um, unicorn fabric. So I'm just going to line things up here, looking good. And I'm going to trim away this whole chunk of selvage here because I do not want this in my project. And this is a Dear Stella print number 1540 if anybody's interested. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! So now you can see that this is the pillow pillowcase, right? So what we need to do is sew down in an L shape here and here. But if we don't want to have any raw edges on the inside, we want to use a French seam. You can also use your serger, but you'd still see some, you know, the stitches, the serger stitch. But I like to do French seams, and so that's what I'm going to show y'all to do. So line it up just like it's going to look when it's complete, and we're going to pin in that L shape. So not along here because the cuff is already finished. That was done on the fold. You're just pinning down here and then across the bottom here. And it might look like you're doing it wrong if you've never done French seams before, but it is correct. You sew it wrong sides together first, then we go back in and we sew wrong sides together. And in those two seams, that's what helps us conceal the raw edges inside and you won't end up with any raw edges anywhere on your whole pillowcase. So that is the beauty of this method. Okay, Blanca says, you're the only person who teaches in an amazing way that's straight and to the point. I can follow as I go and I can always understand what you're saying. You have a beautiful voice for these videos. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really kind of you. I appreciate that. I try to sometimes, especially back in the days when I first started with videos, it was really hard for me to keep it shorter and sweet and to the point. I like to repeat a lot as a teacher and like go over things and share five different ways to do it. But I think I've gotten better over the years <laughs> with breaking down, you know, exactly what I want people to do for the steps. And that's why I have a lot of super simple, like beginner friendly sewing project tutorials on my YouTube channel here, because I find that the more success you have with a simple quickie project, the more likely you are to continue with the sewing. So that's what I want. All right. So I'm just placing my pins. Again, we're going to go straight to sewing from here. So you can use clips if you are a clipper and you can use them here. Notice what I'm doing here to align the raw edges. Instead of picking up the fabric and placing it and then picking it up and placing it to fix it, I leave the fabric as is and I just scratch it in that direction and that tends to move it a sixteenth of an inch, one eighth, whatever I need it to be in order to align things. And you'll always see me doing that no matter what, whether I'm making clothes or quilts, it doesn't matter. I'm always doing that when I need to bring you know raw edges together. All right, so I pinned across there. Now we'll do the same on this side. So we sewed one seam, right? And now we're going to sew two more seams and the pillowcase will be done. Not bad. Oh, awesome, Melanie. Thank you so much. She says she's enjoying learning from me. I'm glad you're tuning in. Remember that if you like this demo and you're learning some tips, make sure you give us a thumbs up and share it on your uh, page. Okay, so now we're gonna sew. Let me grab my, whoops, I just unplugged my foot pedal. Let me grab the sewing machine, scoot it over here. And I know there's like 30 of you on the wait list right now for the Juki LB5020 sewing machines that I use in my demos here. Um, we're waiting to hear word because we should be able to get some soon. So as soon as we restock those, you'll, the, whoever's on our wait list will be the first to know. Okay, so be on the lookout for that. Okay. Oh, Lindsay says she loves my little tips and tricks. That's what it's all about because every time you learn a new little tip or trick in a specific project, it's not just for that one, right? You can use it in your next project and the next project. And that's, I feel like that's how you build up your knowledge over time. People all the time ask me like, how do you know so much? Oh, I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> I learned from them and I tried different little hacks. All right. So my stitch length here, I have mine set to 2.2 and, and 
Okay, and my needle position is set so that I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm going to back stitch at the beginning, and then I'm just going to sew straight down one seam. Oh, awesome. Glenda says she loves the Juki 5020. She says it's an awesome little machine and she got one from us. That's great. I mean, y'all see, I use this every Whip Wednesday. You see how many different projects I've made on it, right? Stretch knit fabrics, quilting cottons, bag making, foam, fusible fleeces. I mean, this thing is a little workhorse. All right, so just a quarter of an inch seam in the L shape. So we are going to pivot at this bottom corner when I get to it. Don't just stitch straight off and then pick up a new seam. You know, you want to pivot. So another reason it's a good beginner project to get you practicing those skills. Anytime we're sewing over uh, or we're sewing pieces of fabric that are squares or rectangles together, we have to typically pivot on a corner. So you're just going to stop whatever seam allowance you're using. Stop that distance up from this bottom corner. So I'm a quarter of an inch seam and I'm going to stop right there. I stop with the needle in the project, lift my presser foot up, then swing the fabric this way. So I realign this edge, presser foot down and keep on sewing. Super easy. But again, one of those key, key skills that you have to have if you're going to be sewing a lot. Almost done with this one. Then I'm going to show you how we trim. So remember, we sewed this first seam in a way that looks like it's backwards. Don't tell me I ran out of bobbin thread. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> oh, how many times does that happen to us, right? When you're just like, I'm almost done. And then the bobbin wins. All right, so I'm going to back stitch at the end too. Needle up, and then I'll cut off of here. Okay, so machine out of the way for now. Now we are going to trim the same seam that we just sewed, trim that seam allowance down to about half. So if you use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here, I'm now going to trim it down to an eighth of an inch. Okay. And it might seem, and I get this a lot, especially from beginners, they'll say like, well, if you were going to just leave it at an eighth of an inch, why did you sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance? Well, if you have ever tried to sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance, you find that it's not going to sit as straight probably because it's such a narrow seam allowance. It's like can be tricky. Sometimes it's like not enough fabric for the feed dogs on the machine to pull through. It's tricky to keep all the edges lined up and still sew that narrow of a seam. So oftentimes you'll see things like this in sewing, especially in garment sewing, where you'll sew like a half of an inch seam allowance and then it tells you trim it down and it's like why am I wasting fabric well it's not because of you're wasting fabric on purpose it's because it's easier to sew it and then trim it down in our case we are making French seams here so we don't have any of these raw edges on the inside of our pillowcase so we have to trim this down to get rid of some of that bulk so that when we go in next and sew another seam we don't have any of these little bits and fraying bits of the fabric creeping out through your seam. So you'll see what I mean when I sew. So notice, I am trimming the seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch. If you're not that comfortable with the rotary cutter and freehanding it, you can see that the fabric kind of wants to bubble up because you're so close to the outer edge and you're trying to trim up. If this starts to bubble up on you, a great tip is to use a ruler just to hold it as a general guide. Even if your seam allowance is not that straight, you don't have to keep the ruler super straight. You can always adjust back and forth, back and forth as you cut, but that way your fingers are away from trying to hold that fabric down and flat, and you can still be following the edge of your ruler to get rid of that teensy little bit of seam allowance trim. All right, so more tips, more tips for you. Okay, all right, so now, we sewed that seam in the L shape, wrong sides of the fabrics touching. We trimmed down. We sewed it a quarter of an inch. We trimmed it down to one eighth of an inch. Now I want you to flip the whole pillowcase wrong side out. And this is the final, final, final seam that we need to sew. But again, remember we talked about the rolling of the fabric. Here it is again. And this always happens. Well, not always, but most of the time. If you're sewing something, then you flip it out. It bubbles up like this. Can you, yes, good, you can see that on camera, what I mean by bubbling up. And so if I were just to take my iron and press this flat, I would be losing, I mean, almost three-eighths of an inch on each side. You don't want that. So again, we need to make sure to pull that fabric out of the seam. So, 
And I know this is like one extra step that takes a little long right before you're done sewing the last seam, but this is absolutely key that you take the time to press here before you sew the final seam, all right? So I'm running my hand inside, pushing on the seam, and lining it up so that the seam line is right on that outer edge, like the side edge of the whole thing. So I will do the cuff first, hit it with the clapper to help set it, and then you're gonna run your fingers down the sides, again doing the same thing. Pull that fabric out of that seam and do it in chunks. You don't want any of that fabric bubbling to the inside. And the flatter you have this, the easier and the quicker it's gonna to be to sew the last seam. Because this needs to be lying flat because that's what you're gonna be aligning with your guide, right? If we're gonna sew quarter of an inch through here, this cannot be crooked and have some in and some out because then your final seam is not gonna be straight either. So I'm just reaching into the seam and pulling that fabric out to get everything as flat as possible as I press. everything out okay Lindsay says she uses a ruler and she sticks it inside to push out the fabric that is a great tip you can do that on the inside like that and push everything out I'm I'm like really tactile I just like to touch all the things and work all the fabric things I feel like that's like my easiest way to learn how to manipulate fabrics in different projects so I really just like to touch the fabric and, and work with it, you know, make it do what I want to do. But uh, a chopstick also works. I have this big chunky bamboo needle, which is great for the corners. If you find that you're having issues with that, like this corner right here, I definitely need to um, poke it out a little bit more. Just make sure you're not using like scissors or anything sharp to poke that out. There we go, perfect. All right, so I'm done pressing this. The clapper really, really helps here because normally you would probably, if you didn't set them super, super flat, you'd probably have to maybe go in and put some pins or some clips as well to hold it flat for when you're gonna go in and sew. But you can see how crisp all my stuff is. So I don't need pins. I'm just gonna go straight to the sewing machine and stitch up the last one. <clears throat> oh, Simone says, I love that you don't assume beginners know what or how to do various skills. That's, that's just the way that I teach, which for people that know what they're doing, it can be super annoying because they're just like, I already know that. Get on with it. But, <laughs> but I teach for the people that don't know it. <laughs> so if that's you, you can just kind of fast forward or skip over some of the stuff that I tend to repeat a lot or go into further explanation for beginners. <laughs> that's just the way I, I teach. It's hard to get away from that. Okay. So we're gonna go in and sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, here's another tip for you. If you sewed a quarter of an inch in the first seam and then you trimmed it down to an eighth of an inch, but you're not that great at sewing super consistently, I would say on this step, sew using a three eighths of an inch seam because that's just gonna give you a little bit extra, right? An extra eighth of an inch wiggle room there so you don't run the risk of going narrower on this seam and uh, have the risk of like the little fraying bits of the previous seam allowance showing through, if that makes sense. So an eighth of an inch is not really gonna affect the size too much. So try that if you find that like a quarter of an inch seam is a little bit too narrow for you. So I'm just gonna go a hair, yeah, I'm gonna do three eighths of an inch, why not? So we'll start at the top here at the cuff and I'm gonna take a couple back stitches to secure that. And then I'm just gonna continue sewing down. I don't have any pins put in here. And because I'm sewing through a little bit more bulk, I'm gonna bump my stitch length up to 2.6 this time. So if you don't know that tip, remember that if your machine tends to kind of get hung up or you feel like it's not feeding the fabric through as quickly as you'd like, consider lengthening your stitch length to help the machine pull more fabric through at a time. And that can happen when we're sewing through bulky things. Of course, the cuff has more layers of fabric than the body of this does. That's why I lengthened it, especially up there. Here, I mean, it's not gonna make too much of a difference two millimeters in length is not a big deal. All right. I'm basically stitching here a seam allowance that will allow me to clear completely the previous seam allowance. And that's what a French seam is. 
Instead of sewing the seam once, you sew it twice, but you end up with a clean finish on the inside and no raw edges. So again, I pivoted, needle down in the project, lift, turn my fabric, press her foot back down, and then continue stitching across this L shape. And that's it. We're gonna give it one final press when we flip the whole thing right side out, and that's, that's it. it. Doesn't take long at all, especially if you skip the, cut, the little decorative trim. My, my tutorial that's on my YouTube channel, oh, I'm trying to backstitch here. Give me a couple back stitches. Uh, my tutorial that's on the YouTube channel, if you just type in like Crafty Gemini Burrito Pillowcase or just Pillowcase, that one, we did three pieces of fabric because we add a decorative little thin trim, another strip of fabric in there in between the cuff and the main body. But for this one, we just did the cuff, the main body, boom. Two pieces, three seams, and we're out of there. And again, no raw edges anywhere. I mean, look, this, this side that we just sewed is the inside of the pillowcase. It's such a great way to finish it, such a clean look, and still beginner friendly, right? Doesn't require anything fancy, and not much extra time at all. So, actually, let me leave this here, because I, I can't help it. I'm like trying to save time and skip a step of pressing, but I can't. I just, I like to press, and I like my stuff to look crisp. Okay. All right. Um, Annette says she's just tuning in because she had a conference call at work. Thanks for tuning in, Annette. And she's asking, will you have this as a video tutorial? So I do have it as a video tutorial, but if y'all would like to see me do an updated version, let me know that in the comments below because we're looking, we're putting together a list now of new video content to create for my YouTube channel. And I mean, that video is about 10 years old. So if y'all want to see a revamped version, let me know in the comments. And um, we'll look that over as we you know, prepare our editorial calendar to to make more videos. All right. So again, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> I do it without even thinking about it. Is pulling out that fabric, right, from the side seam. Give it a good quick press. What a cute little gift. And there you go. I hope that those tips on working with the directional fabric helped y'all to give it a go because I know a lot of those like juvenile prints, novelty fun prints, um, a lot of them feature directional prints like this. So here, I can probably just pull this out. I don't have to go in on the inside. But if you needed to, you can always, you know, use a chopstick, a ruler, or a big chunky knitting needle and poke that section out. All right, so let's have a look at what we got here. We have the cuff going this way, and the unicorns are oriented correctly, even though it is a directional print. So that worked out beautifully for us. Remember, because this is one continuous piece, if we flip it this way, they're gonna be upside down. So just keep that in mind when you're working with directional prints, especially if you're some of the ones that like to add like embroidery on it and do things, make sure that you plan ahead for how you're orienting everything to the way that you want the design to look, which way is front and which is the back of your pillowcase. All right, let's go ahead and switch to my face here. These are gonna be cute for Allie's room. She likes these. She said navy is her new favorite color, y'all, so. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, great. Oh, some of you are saying that you do want me to do an updated video, so that's great. That's awesome. Sometimes I think like, well, I've already done that, and I don't think people are interested in seeing me do it again, but, I mean, nothing like a new cameras and, and new video footage and cute new fabrics to, <laughs> to make another tutorial with. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh good, some of you are giving me some other um, video suggestions. That's something that we're always looking forward to. I'm gonna get ready to send out an email um, gathering some more, more information from y'all as we put together a new editorial calendar. And I posted on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page a poll, was it yesterday? or the day before. There's a poll there with like a big question mark and I was asking basically, what are your main struggles when it comes to sewing and quilting? Like what do you struggle with the most? And I was actually surprised to see that a lot of you said getting started and like following through with the project from beginning to end. So it looks like a lot of you are maybe losing steam, like you might go into a project super excited and then once you start it kind of just goes so uh, I, I think that's really interesting, and it's one of the ways that I like to offer my video courses uh, that I do in my clubs and bag clubs and garment classes and stuff like that is super step-by-step -step so that you can follow along with us. And that seems to help keep people incentivized because we do giveaways at the end uh, to get people you know, completing the projects and going down step-by-step. Uh, -step. So I'll definitely be planning to do more stuff like that. 
All right. Um, great. Let me see anything else. Oh, Lucretia says, can you show what the seam looked like on the inside? Yeah. So the seam looks like exactly what we had just sewn when you sew it. So here is, oh, I'm, I'm like showing this camera, but can you see how the seam is? It's not raw. It's completed seam. And the side, I mean, it's exactly, the inside was the part that we just sewed. So no raw edges. This is how it looks. It's just a sewn seam. The whole thing on the inside is like that. So there's no raw edges at all. Okay. So definitely give this project a try. If you haven't watched my first version of the tutorial that I did 10 years ago, the link is on YouTube. You can always just do a quick search crafty Gemini pillowcase and the step-by-step -step video tutorial. I think it's less than eight minutes long. We'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to make it. Okay. In this video, if you just missed it, you can go ahead and rewind it in the replay. And, um, I share tips on working with directional fabrics on how to make the pillowcase. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I will send out some new emails. If you're not on my email list, definitely check that out. And I will see y'all next Wednesday for another edition of Whip Wednesday. Bye.